What's up YouTube? We're going to be looking at another prediction check after the Italian Grand Prix. And yeah, this starts with the Kimi retiring. We were expecting to cancel the this prediction after the Italian Grand Prix. However, we don't know it yet and we haven't gotten no news about it. Uh, four different teams winning races. Um, so far with 14 rounds in, for Mercedes have had six victories, Ferrari five, Red Bull three. So yeah, it's pretty much impossible that a fourth team will win a race. Honda, good but unreliable, good races and bad races. We have that point since China, you may remember Pierre Gasly being P4 in Bahrain and of course in China they crashed into each other so yeah and as Shane Bear pointed out Toro Rosso have used more engine components power unit components than anyone else so yeah 15 cars getting engine penalties finally we have that point with Ericsson being uh, the latest one to get the his first engine penalty with a new internal combustion engine that leaves us up to 15 so yeah McLaren did not ruin the orange livery and Red Bull did not have a red a fancy unique livery so yeah Big crash causing a halo controversy. We have that since the Belgian Grand Prix. Super hard used only once. Every compound has been announced, including Abu Dhabi, and we are only seeing the hard tire in Silverstone. So, no super hard, but the hard is worth a half point. Liberty Media. Overcompensating on grid goals, yes, that happened, but in the process, they did spice up the pre-race show by introducing that now famous intro. We don't know yet if the 2021 rules will or won't include the MGUH, so we're still gonna have to wait for that. Valtteri Bottas finishing P4 or lower. He is P4 at the moment, but it's still mathematically possible that he can continue up the ladder. But given that he's given, given the fact that he has been given the the wingman status to um, Lewis Hamilton, this is unlikely. Red Bull will definitely not sign Fernando Alonso because Fernando Alonso is retiring. Instead. The guy who will partner um, Verstappen will be Pierre Gasly and Red Bull of course uh, did sign Honda so yeah, that happened that was expected Fernando Alonso did win the 24 hours of Le Mans we have that point since then um, one new race winner of course, Chamber doesn't like the fact that I'm counting Max Verstappen for the um, Austrian Grand Prix. And sorry, I did not update this slide, but you get the idea. Max Verstappen, before the Austrian Grand Prix, had never won without the caveat boost. So, I'm um, counting that. Vettel outscore, outscoring Kimi 2-1. to one. Even though Kimi is very much a wingman, because of that, that absolute blunder by Sebastian Vettel, the rate is now 1.38. And at this point, if Sebastian Vettel keeps behaving like this, he will not be world champion this year, or the next, or the next, or the next. No one has gotten a penalty ban, but importantly, um, halfway to a penalty ban is being disqualified and Romain Grosjean was disqualified due to an illegal flaw so that's a half point for that Red Bull finishing second is of course a very very unlikely 
So, yeah, it's pretty much very likely to be cancelled. Williams finishing P7 or worse. What can we say about that? It's pretty much guaranteed that they will be 7th or worse, even though Grosjean being disqualified makes these two guys the, um, uh, the first ever double points finish for Williams this season and Sergei Sorotkin's first ever championship point. Not that it will be of any use since they are both out of contention for the championship. So, yeah. Um, red flag due to a rubbish event. Of course, we have that manhole cover in Monaco. And that gives us, um, on the chain bear board, a total of 10 points after out of 25. So, not yet the halfway point. But the halfway point is, again, rather likely, I think. I hope. Um, here's my prediction board, and of course we have um, that half point, uh, that additional half point from the WTF1 like on one of my reactions to the um, British Grand Prix. No one has come out of the closet, and well, it likely no one will anytime soon. Alonso, resting pick reference. Hungary, where he, when he was manipulating a TV camera. So, yeah, topless photos. We have that point since the um, Belgian Grand Prix because the collection was finally finished during the summer break. Russia joke, we only had to wait until Canada for Sahara Force India to say this. Of course, this team doesn't exist any longer but it still counts uh, Kimi angry on team radio we have that since Hungary for yeah you forgot to connect the drink first yes confirmed is the drink is it on now he did not have the drink and he was not amused Crashes in Monaco, Singapore, we have the half points in Monaco, and this is because, you know, Charles Leclerc and Brendan Hartley, and Singapore is in two weeks, so it could be that we could have the half point in just two weeks' time. A race without any DNFs, we have that since China, because Hartley was classified P20. And finally, Roman Grosjean finally deserved to be disqualified. This time for a rubbish reason, like a, like a badly made floor, but still disqualified, and it's someone I really do not like, so I'm happy about it. And of course, Princess Dressgate at this point speaks for itself. I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? Is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! So, yeah. Um, foreigner, well, non native speaker of Spanish giving an interview in Spanish. That was Felipe Massa in Spain. We have that point since then. 10 races having a first lap drama. We have that point since the Belgian Grand Prix. And the Italian Grand Prix again had its fair share of first lap drama with Vettel hitting Hamilton. A driver being sent back at the grid twice. We have that point since Spain. And for the first time in Italy, someone other than Brendan Hartley is being sent to the back of the grid for the second time. Being Hülkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo. So, yeah, that happened. Verstappen, driver of the day in Austria, of course. When he won for the first time without a Kvyat boost. Driver of the day score being no higher than one third, it's still mathematically possible for some driver to get a more than get the eighth driver of the day, but I think it's unlikely. Raikkonen got driver of the day in Italy, 
in, in fact, I voted for Raikkonen not because I liked Raikkonen, but because I was sick and tired of Vettel winning Driver of the Day, even though I liked Stroll best. Ocon on the podium, of course that hasn't happened and it probably won't happen this season, but I counted um, Perez as a half point for his podium in Azerbaijan, and let's be honest, Azerbaijan is the only track in which a midfielder can get a podium. However, in Belgium, Esteban Ocon was podium in qualifying. To me, that's good enough for a good for a good for point. And let's be realistic: this is as far as we're gonna get. That is P3. P3. You're joking. You're joking. Yes. Woo! Well done, guys. Well done. It's Hamilton to tell you. Oh my God. So yeah, we have that full point. Mexico trophy. We don't. No yet, but if we want to get the four point, it has to be one of these four people giving the trophy. We're gonna have to wait until short until um, Halloween to know if we get the point or not. No injury or death. We have that point cancelled since Bahrain because of the whole Francesco Zigorini situation. Andres Manuel did not lose the general election. In fact, he won by an absolute landslide. And so we have that point cancelled since the Austrian Grand Prix and it's honestly not looking very good for the country. Yeah. Vesha been doing something stupid, we have that point well we've had that point for a long time. And in fact he, this is him in Monaco, you may remember him in FP3. We did get used to the Halo, especially after what happened in Austria. Well, this is Makino in Spain, and this is Leclerc in uh, uh, sorry, Austria no Belgium. Pit stop problems, ten races. It was not a problem for us that we went unscathed in in Italy, since we have a total of twelve. And Force India hasn't smashed into each other and they already went through administration and the team um, disappeared and was replaced by another team called Racing Point. Uh, half point, I probably, I, it probably counts as a full point, but I still have hope of Racing Point for India not crashing into each other. Mexican Pesa devaluating, we have that point since the French Grand Prix, and even though it has recovered some value after the election, it is likely that it will sharply drop after Andres Manuel takes possession of the presidential seat, and 19th of September going terribly wrong is actually running out of time. The Singapore Grand Prix is in just two weeks, so we only have to wait until then to know if my birthday will go terribly wrong. And yeah. On my predictions board, we have 17 out of 25, well past the half point for my predictions board. And yeah, that gives us a total of 27 out of 50 as of the 3rd of September. As a, now let's look at the championship span. This is a formula with uh, that we used to calculate it. And once your span goes to zero, you can no longer be world champion. As of the Italian Grand Prix, we have seven rounds left. So that's 175 points yet to be contested. With the championship leader, Lewis Hamilton, having 256 championship points. As of the Belgian Grand Prix, this was... The, um, the score, the championship span score with Sainz having negative one and everyone behind him being out of contention. 
with Hülkenberg, uh, well, well, Hülkenberg and Ocon and everyone in between being in serious danger. And to be sure, they did get taken. They did get taken out of contention on the Italian Grand Prix, with the Red Bulls now being in a semi-serious contention with a span of less than 50. It's likely that at least Daniel Ricciardo will be taken out of contention by Singapore. As for the Belgian Grand Prix, this was the score and this is how it looks now with Williams being the first to get a championship span of negative 100. Only the, th only the top three teams are in contention and no one is in danger so after the, um, the Singapore Grand Prix it is mathematically guaranteed that no one will be taken out. And yeah, Renault, Renault, Haas and McLaren were taken out in Italy. This is uh, my Instagram if you want to follow me. And yeah, I'll see you next time for the Singapore Grand Prix.